This is the time in our service when we invite the children to come a little bit closer to the screen for the children's message. Now, everyone's invited to listen in, but this is a special time that we share with the youngest members of our church family. Well, here we are in the second week of Advent. Advent is a time of waiting. Since I don't like to wait by myself, I thought maybe we could wait together for a minute. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. Oh, I don't know about you, but I'm not very good at waiting. At least during Advent, we have some exciting things to wait for. We're waiting for Jesus to come. We're waiting to celebrate Jesus' birth on Christmas morning. Maybe some of you are waiting to see where Elf the sh on the Shelf will appear next. Maybe some of you are waiting to decorate your house or bake Christmas cookies. At our house, we're waiting to finish our Advent calendar. I get so excited about that because our calendar tells the story of Jesus' birth. I brought a picture for you to see. Here, look. You can see Joseph, Mary and the baby Jesus, the manger and the animals who lived in the stable. You can see the angels who told the shepherds about the bird. And look, there were the shepherds and their sheep. Can you find the big star that led the wise men to visit Jesus and his family? And there are the wise men and the gifts they brought. Mr. Jack and I take turns putting the pieces on our Advent calendar. I was excited because this year I got to put on the very first piece but then I had to wait two whole days until it was my turn again. I'm always excited to see the story grow as we add each piece. I know that waiting is hard, but this week, look for the things you can be excited about while you wait. Let's pray. Dear God, help us to wait with excitement during this Advent season. Thank you for sending Jesus, who was your perfect gift of love. Amen. Thank you for sharing this time with me. Will you pray with me? Faithful God, send your Holy Spirit to be with us during this time. Place in my hands the wonderful key that will unlock this scripture passage and set us all free to wait with excitement. Amen. What a way to start your day. An angel appears on your doorstep. The scripture tells us that Mary was thoroughly shaken. Well, who wouldn't be? Then, after the angel's very complimentary greeting, that same angel tells you that you are going to have God's son. So here you are, a teenager, who has just been informed that you're going to become a mother, even though you and Joseph have not consummated your betrothal, which is an offense that is punishable by being stoned to death, since Joseph isn't the baby's father. What will Joseph think? What will the neighbors say? Poor Mary. She must have been scared, confused, overwhelmed, anxious. Which means that Mary would have understood exactly how we're feeling now. In the midst of a global pandemic, who among us isn't feeling scared, overwhelmed, confused, anxious? So what might we learn from this teenager who lived so long ago that could help us feel excited as we wait for the promised one? Well, once Mary got over the shock and confusion, I wonder if she didn't feel just a little bit excited. Mary had a purpose. She was carrying a holy child. She would be the mother of the Messiah. Now that's purpose. I suspect that's one of the reasons why so many of us have struggled during this time of isolation and quarantine, because we don't have a sense of 
purpose in our lives. We had to reinvent ourselves, and there hasn't really been time or energy to think about our purpose. For some, surviving each day has been your purpose. For others, learning to juggle working from home with educating or entertaining children has been your purpose. And while those purposes, so very important, they don't seem to be very exciting. Based on Facebook postings, I know that some of you have immersed yourself in projects. House cleaning, cooking, baking, gardening, sewing, remodeling, woodworking. And while those projects aren't always exciting, at least you had a sense of satisfaction and accomplishment. So our challenge this Advent week will be to find a purpose that provides some excitement. It might not be the kind of excitement that we see on children's faces on Christmas Day. But I don't think that's the kind of excitement that Mary experienced either during the angel's visit. I think Mary's was more of a quiet excitement. Maybe some of you will find that in choosing Christmas gifts. Others might find it in baking cookies to share with family, friends, neighbors, first responders, or healthcare workers. Whatever you find your purpose to be this week, if it doesn't seem very exciting to you, use it to bring some of Mary's quiet excitement into someone else's life. Now, scripture tells us that one of the first things Mary did after the angel's visit was to pack her bags and go visit Elizabeth. Mary didn't have any technological options available to connect her with her cousin. Can you imagine the excited chatter if Mary and Elizabeth had had phones? Elizabeth, it's Mary. You are not going to believe this, but an angel named Gabriel just popped in and told me that I'm going to have a baby, and it's going to be God's son. I'm to name him Jesus, and... Seriously, Elizabeth, I'm not making this up. Oh, I believe you, Mary. That angel Gabriel really gets around. He visited me a few months ago, and you're not going to believe this, but well, you know how old I am. And I'm six months pregnant with a son. I'm to name him John, and he will prepare God's people for the coming of the Messiah. That technology wasn't available to them, so Mary packed up and went to visit Elizabeth for three months. Their need to connect during this exciting time in their lives must have been very strong, and I imagine their days were filled with both quiet and lively excitement. Now, it's not safe for us to visit during these times of COVID-19, but we do have the luxury of staying connected through technology. We can generate excitement by hosting an ugly sweater contest via Zoom for our family and friends. We can call someone that we haven't connected with in a while. Imagine the excitement of our homebound members if they got a call from some of their church family. One of the things I always got excited about during Advent was baking Christmas cookies. The part I liked second best, right up there with eating them, was the way the house smelled. Oh, those lovely aromas of cinnamon and chocolate and peanut butter. I thought how much our homebound relatives and friends must miss those smells. And I discovered you can make your own scratch and sniff cards. Imagine the excitement and delight of getting a card that smells like homemade cookies. Maybe you can think of other ways to connect with people this year. Our challenge this Advent week will be discover ways to stay connected to those we love and those who need us. And perhaps we'll find a way to inject some excitement into our week as well as theirs. As we heard in the opening monologue, when Mary greeted her cousin, the baby in Elizabeth's womb leaped for joy and Mary burst into song and sang out exuberantly, my soul lifts up the Lord, my spirit celebrates God. 
One of the traditions I used to get most excited about was our annual Christmas caroling night at church. We rented a school bus and went to visit various shut-ins at the homes. When we got there, we piled out of the bus, distributed the song sheets, sang at the top of our lungs, handed over a box of cookies and fruit, piled back in the box, bus, and traveled to the next person's home. Now, I'm not a great singer, but at Christmas, I do tend to sing exuberantly, especially when I'm singing Christmas carols with a group of friends. I was sad to think that this year, there won't be any caroling. Then I thought, hang on, why should we let that virus Grinch steal our excitement? Now, I'm not technologically savvy, but I have learned how to make a conference call using my cell phone, which got me to thinking, what if I got some of my church family to go caroling by phone to some of our shut-ins? That's something I could get excited about. And if you're interested, and excited, let me know. Or maybe you'll want to organize your own caroling event. My prayer for you as you wait during this Advent season is that your week will be filled with purpose, with connecting with people in whatever way is safest for you, and with the exuberant singing of Gloria in Excelsis Deo's Alleluia's and Hallelujah's as you wait with excitement for the coming of our Savior.